yesterday. She is a senior at Ocean Lakes High School. That's how long we've been fighting this. The thing you need to understand about light rail in Virginia Beach is light rail is a cog in a much larger agenda. This agenda has been going since the mid-80s. Uh, Mr. Dean brought all of these documents from the 1998 environmental impact study. If you read anything in this region, light rail has been a plan by a certain business lobby to try to create high-density urban development, and it's a part of what's often referred to as Agenda 21, and I'm going to get into that. So, this was my first sign that I had at the rally for uh, light rail, and nothing has changed. Light rail is a monster designed to eat your taxes, and as you'll notice, the destination is the poorhouse. Light rail is brought to you by HRT. Some people think that stands for Hampton Roads Transit. I know it stands for Higher Redevelopment Taxes, and I will prove that to you tonight. This is your tax money not at work. I didn't make this up. This is the Tidewater Transit mascot that you paid for with your tax dollars on the opening day of the Tide. It's fitting to me that he's wearing the letter T because T stands for taxes. Let's check in on the website that Phil Chiquette created to see how Hampton Roads Transit is reporting how well they're doing. Last night I went on board and I downloaded this. Apparently they're not doing very well because every indicator for transit is down and Ridership on the rail is down by 21.9%, and this is reported by Hampton Roads Transit. What we're going to cover tonight is the introduction, which I've just done. We're going to talk about the ballot question, because those of you that live in Virginia Beach will be... 
I'm going to give you some important information on what you need to know about light rail, but more importantly, what you're not going to hear anywhere else other than here tonight. I'm going to talk to you about the history of passenger rail in Virginia Beach because it's a fascinating story, and when you hear this, I think you'll be very surprised. We're going to do shortly following the yellow or the gold brick road, and we're going to show you the relationship of the United Nations Agenda 21 to regionalism, to strategic growth areas in Virginia Beach, to light rail. And then most importantly, I left time in this presentation for us to talk about what do we do. That's what's important. We have until November. This is the ordinance that you will be voting on. The thing you need to pay attention to is it's the financing and development of Norfolk's Tide in the city of Virginia Beach. There is a large opposition, uh, in favor group, who are pushing this, and they have ad campaigns, and the ad campaigns are misleading. The ad campaigns are telling you that all this is is a vote to explore light rail, to further consider light rail. Folks, you read the question, it's baloney. This is misleading, and we're going to talk about it. Well, where did this come from? This came from our mayor, and our mayor is a member of the Bill and Will Show. Now you might say, the Bill and Will Show, okay? Will Sessom and Billy Harrison. If you look up in the corner, you'll notice that a pack was formed for $300,000 to buy these ads to mislead the people voting in Virginia Beach. Mislead them. And it's being headed up by former city council member Billy Harrison. Who is Billy Harrison? Folks, these people have worked very hard to put all their ducks in a row to make this thing happen. This is our structure. We have the worst <coughs> metropolitan planning organization in the United States. They were censored. They were told, if you don't straighten up and pay more attention to citizens, we're going to pull all your federal highway funds. You probably didn't hear anything about this. So part of the Get Well plan was to form a citizen transportation advisory committee and ask people, who got to pick and appoint the people to the committee? Will Sessoms. Who did he appoint as the chairman of the Citizen Advisory Committee? Billy Harrison, the guy who's heading up the PAC for light rail. You following this? Who is in Virginia Beach's Citizen Transportation Advisory Committee? Well, let's see. We've got Delcina Miles, a consultant hired by HRT to advocate for light rail. She's your citizen representative. We have the chair of the Minority Business Council, who I happen to like, but the point is, this is a feeding frenzy for contracts to go to minority businesses. This is about money. And who else sits on there? Carolyn McPherson, the executive director of Light Rail Now. And of course, John uh, Melbourne, who you probably know. Folks, those are your citizen representatives. I have applied, I have attended these meetings, I have never been contacted, and we have two vacant seats on this committee. Who's paying for this PAC? Here you go. If you go to the VPAC, everything has to be registered by law. And what do we have? Amata Hoffler, Ameritrue, Pembroke Enterprises, Pembroke Square, Town Bank, Will Sessom's employer, and my favorite, Michael Barrett and Ruddy Mead Corporation. These are the people that are raising the $300,000 to put those misleading ads on the radio and they will be on television in this very busy political season. But you don't know who else is in here because they have filed illegally to only put in paper applications, but they can't exceed $10,000, which if you do the math, they clearly do. So you don't know who's contributing to this. Who and where is our mayor on this issue? He says, and I quote, everywhere I go, people of all ages say, we have to get light rail in Virginia Beach. I concur 100%. <laughs> Except when the man ran for office, he said, I'm not taking the position. I support getting a study on it. We'll hold a referendum, and I'll live by the results of that referendum. Study? What study? 
6.6 million dollars we are paying. The study was delayed. We will not have the study, but you're going to vote without the information. Why? Because in 1999, Robert Dean, myself, and others in this group read the environmental impact study and realized from audited numbers with the Federal Transportation Administration that that thing was over a billion dollars and a horrific waste of money. We beat them with the facts, so this time they won't allow the facts to be in the debate. What part of no doesn't our city council know? In 1999, we held an amazing regional-wide discussion on light rail in Virginia Beach. And when it was all said and done, the voters rejected it and said no. What's the other thing about light rail you don't hear? In Virginia, we are a Dillon Rule state, which means every city doesn't have the right to do anything unless the General Assembly allows them to do it. If you want a Housing and Redevelopment Authority, you must hold a referendum because that's what the General Assembly said. Every time we've held a referendum, do we need it? We have said no. The city, Mr. Byler was talking about spending money to advocate. After we rejected it in 96, they launched public voices on redevelopment and the city paid people to come out and hold these fake city meetings, which Mr. Dean and I and others attended, and tried to create the impression that we wanted a redevelopment authority. But when it went to the ballot, we rejected it by nearly two to one opposed. It's another misuse of your tax dollars. Why am I telling you about redevelopment and light rail? Because they're one in the same. Light rail is not about moving people from point A to point B. It's not about reducing traffic congestion. It's not about improving the environment, which it doesn't do. It's not about increasing tax revenue from transit-oriented development, which it will not do. Light rail is about redevelopment because you said no and the city manager and his staff said, I don't want to take no for an answer. So I'm going to use federal powers of eminent domain to commend, condemn property in our city because I don't have the power to do that. My voters didn't let me, but I can get the power from Hampton Roads Transit because it's federal. Public voices on redevelopment, if you've ever been through one of these processes, it's a lie. And we know because we were there. So my point to you is, this is a backdoor attempt to ignore what you voters have told them when you said no. Because if light rail is allowed, like a cancer, to spread into Virginia Beach, mm -hmm. the power of eminent domain comes with it to close down businesses which are targeted all along the light rail line. What is it important for you to know? You should always ask these questions. Right here you'll notice the music man, because we've got trouble here in River City and we need a boys band. That's what light rail is all about. You need to know who pays, who doesn't pay, who benefits, and who does not benefit. And here's the sad truth of it, friends. The people who pay are the taxpayers, because this is massive subsidies. Who doesn't pay? The people that ride the train and the developers that profit from the increased value of the land they bought when they speculated on it. Who benefits? Developers, bankers, transit firms, and Hampton Roads Transit. Who doesn't benefit? Taxpayers and drivers. Folks, we pay federal gasoline taxes and we pay state gasoline taxes to take care of our roads. Money is siphoned off of that to pay for light rail. The money that we pay at the gas pump to fix our roads isn't fixing our roads. If you've driven along 264 lately, bring a new set of tires, all right? A hundred percent of light rail is paid for out of gas taxes. So the people using it are not paying for it. Something you don't know, Hampton Roads Transit pays no gasoline taxes but they drive on roads with buses and they will use light rail. So, we have a study, the $6 million, well, all right, $6.6 .6 million man. We can build it faster, we can build it cheaper. This study will have two legs. One leg that will run from Newtown Road to the pavilion, not to the oceanfront, but near the convention center. 
And the other one will be studied later to run out to the Navy base. One can argue the Navy base should have been built first. Doesn't matter. Problem with this is you're not going to get the information until after you vote. This, to hat tip to Mr. Dean, light rail equals heavy taxes. And if you don't understand this, I'm going to prove it to you tonight. I'm going to tell you how much Virginia Beach is going to pay for this. I got these numbers from Hampton Roads Transit. In the first 11 months of their operation, in audited numbers, they had to pay $10,645,000 to subsidize the operation and maintenance. That doesn't count the money, the $310 million to build it. That's just what it costs for the, the operators, the maintenance, and taking care of the vehicles. If you project that with an additional month, that's $11.4 million. It's the train to insolvency. All new vehicles don't need. Well, you can argue that, but let me get on with this. In Virginia Beach, your annual tax increase every year is going to start at $15.5 million. Folks, we're broke. We're cutting teachers. We're cutting fire department. We don't have the money. We are short in Virginia Beach's budget. But we're going to add $15 million a year right off the top. And that's not counting the interest on the bonds we're going to sell to pay our share of building light rail. We cannot afford this developer banker welfare program. This is crony capitalism at its worst. What about the people that are going to ride it? They call them fares, but there's nothing fair about HRT's fare structure. The most a person will pay is 10% of the cost of a ride. It's a buck and a half. That means that ride costs $15 and you pay a buck and a half. But that's not good enough for HRT, because if you buy with a discounted pass for 30 days, you pay $1.14 to ride the light rail and every bus. If you pay for this 30-day go pass, it's $1.69. Very difficult to do, but I figured it out. I took the schedule, I counted the number of trains, I counted the hours they operate, and I did the math. If one train is running, it costs for every seat on that train $25.52 of operation and maintenance fund for that train. If all nine trains are running, that cost drops down to $2.83 a seat. Folks, you're paying for people to ride on this. They're not. Which brings me to the success of ridership. It's easy to have success when you offer free pony rides. Woohoo! Line up, someone else is going to pay for it. That's how you get ridership numbers. Light rail is unsustainable. We cannot replace roads with light rail. The master plan for our region has 100 miles of light rail at $75 million a mile, which is $7.5 billion. That is more than we've paid for the Hampton Roads Bridge Tunnel, the Monitor Merrimack Bridge Tunnel. Route 460, the downtown tunnel, and the midtown tunnel. Let me say that again. What you're talking about will drive us to the poorhouse. Can you spell bankruptcy? HRT? Nope. Because the taxpayers put the bill and HRT doesn't care. If you ran a business this way, you would be out of business. You're going to hear a lot about transit-oriented development. The people selling this will say, it's great. We're going to have these areas. We're going to do tall rise buildings. We'll have mixed use, just like the cities in the old days. The downstairs will be retail. The middle apartments will be affordable housing, section 8. And the top will be pet houses and studios. And all this extra real estate taxes will flow in. And it'll more than pay for itself. It's a lie. And the proof of it is in Norfolk. Ever hear of Granby Towers? <laughs> Granby Towers. Doesn't this look awesome? By the way, this is light rail right here. Okay, downtown Norfolk. Beautiful thing. Buddy's going to build this. It's great. He sold this to the city. Light rail, transit-oriented development. What is Granby Towers? It's a hole in the ground. <laughs> and because it's a hole in the ground, it's now worse because it's a taxpayer-funded park 
until they can find something to be built there. <laughs> Why isn't there transit-oriented development? Folks, we had a burst in the housing bubble. Try to get a loan. Try to refinance your house. The paperwork is, is bigger than the Affordable Health Care Act, OK? These developers are not going to be able to build hundreds of millions of dollars of high rise in Virginia Beach because they can't get the money. Why? Because banks aren't going to take the risk. But city council wants to take the risk with the debt that you have to pay. This is out of the uh, extension study, $6.6 million study. You'll notice that its purpose is to promote strategic growth areas. And in here are all the things you're supposed to do, and all that talks about economic development, and nothing talks about taking cars off the road or environment or any of those things. What are SGAs? <coughs> if you go to our city's website, these strategic growth areas, all you need to understand is strategic growth area equals light rail. Well, read. how do you know this? I'm going to prove it to you. These are their documents, not mine. Strategic growth areas created in 2009 up to 11. With certain targeted growth areas, light rail will blend into the development. SGAs are designed for the greater use of al alternative transportation systems. These are little mini town centers that I'm going to show you where they are. And what it really is, is a developer banker welfare program. And light rail is the catalyst. Our good friends at Runnymede, who part of, contributed to this, if you read this from the study, and I had to redact the name of the taxpayer-funded company that was hired by Virginia Beach, even though I downloaded it, because it's illegal for me to show their name. So you paid for this study. Here's the information, but I can't tell you who did it. <laughs> you can go on their website and download it yourself. This is all about transit-oriented development. And it's not about bus rapid transit, because this slide shows you that if you put buses there instead of light rail, the developers aren't going to make money. Read this further. Achieving the development feasibility. The introduction of transit into SGAs in a pre-development stage. What does that mean? We're going to build it first. Build it, and they will come. <laughs> Field of dreams, folks. Meanwhile, without these market movers, transit being key, I didn't make this up. I downloaded it off the city's website. Transit being key, the amount of subsidy required to accomplish the objectives grows several times over. What they're telling you is all this redevelopment in Virginia Beach is planned to be subsidized with additional taxes. Whatever happened to private people investing their own money and making their own risk and profit? Today, it's crony capitalism. Mm. Mm -hmm. The importance of fixed rail transit is compelling demand for the SGAs with market premiums given the underlying economics. There will be some level of public investment of redevelopment for the SGAs. But while we paid a few million dollars for this report that I'm quoting from you, it has a get out of jail free card in the report this is it. It basically tells you everything we put in here for the numbers and projections, you can't hold us accountable because, well, we don't really know. Yeah. <laughs> You're free to read this if you wish. These are your strategic growth areas. They're going to be high-density urban redevelopment. Where is the light rail line proposed? Wow! Isn't that amazing? Want to see that? I mean, exactly the same place. You'll hear a lot about if we build all this transit-oriented development and the city has all this new real estate put in, like town center, that that's going to fill our coffers in the general fund and help pay for the schools and help pay for the fire department, help pay for the police and services. Bull. Because we have tax incremental finance districts. And if you don't know what that is, it means they set a baseline year and every increase in the real estate taxes goes only back into the tax incremental finance district to help pay off the bond debt and spend it within those business areas. How long will it be before every strategic growth area in Virginia Beach is the tax incremental finance district? Mm -hmm. Not very long, my friends. So the profits they're promised, if there are any, will not come back to us, but we will pay for it. This is the tide in Norfolk. It's a tide ill wave 
of new taxes. Norfolk has got away without paying for them because there was a honeymoon period under New Starts where the state and federal government helped subsidize your operating costs. But after two years, that goes away, and the Norfolk taxpayer people will wake up with a really horrible headache. <laughs> Don't let the cheerleaders for light rail try to tell you the definition of success is ridership. Bull. It ought to be taking cars off the road. Ridership? Who cares? It's free pony rides. And yes, this is a dog and pony show, my friends. All right? Ridership projections. Mr. Dean provided me with the environmental impact study. Right here in this study from 1998, the federally audited, if we had a new one, numbers are 18,700 a day. HRT couldn't possibly reach that number, so they set it lower. And now they're exceeding the lower number. It's a success. Woohoo! Mom and Dad, I'm not going to go for an A, I'm going for a D. I got a C. I'm a success. It's baloney. <laughs> free pony rides, you get free rides on the tide, and there are so many discounts that most of the people riding this pay nothing. Now, all over the United States, and this is the National Light Rail Now website, our light rail line, 7.4 miles in Norfolk, is being touted as an amazing success, overwhelming success, because it exceeded the lower ridership projection. How can we be a success if the people that brought 7.4 miles of light rail were 46% over budget a year late should be in jail? Okay, and the only time I have ever called the FBI in my life was when I got the report from VDOT and it proved for a fact that HRT violated federal contracting laws by giving out procurements, 16 of the 24, to their friends without competitive bids, some of whom are sitting on your Citizen Transportation Advisory Committee appointed by the mayor of Virginia Beach to serve on it to represent you, the people. You following this? Mm -hmm. This guy, Michael Towns, the CEO, should have been fired. But you can't fire these people because there's an all-appointed Transportation District Commission of Hampton Roads who they report to. And they didn't have the backbone to fire this guy for, by fact, keeping two sets of books, lying to the feds, and putting everything at risk. He was forced to be allowed to retire with two years of pay and a golden parachute. Woohoo! He made $235,000 a year and ironically got a Crown Vic car to drive to work, paid for by you, the taxpayers. When he retired, he was replaced with Phil Chiquette at $480,000 a year, $80,000 a year more than the President of the United States is paid. How is this a success, friends? Think about that, because they're going to tell you, oh, we exceeded ridership projections. What are the actual numbers from HRT after 11 years of operation? These numbers are non-commuters, people taking the train in downtown Norfolk for a few blocks, not commuters, and people that do not drive. 25% of the trips in the morning rush hour start at Newtown Road. The other 75% take place in downtown Norfolk from this street over to this street. The total numbers is 351 people. Folks, you have over 60,000 cars that go through that same corridor every morning. This makes no difference whatsoever along 264. These are their numbers, not mine. Their average a day is 5,000 people but they were supposed to hit 18,700 according to the audited study, which you don't have for the new one because they won't give it to you before you vote. Here are your monthly ridership. What is ridership? Let's talk about our fictional rider. His name is Henry. <laughs> now, Henry decides he can't drive because he is disabled. 
So our hypothetical rider gets on at Newtown Road by taking a bus, and he goes down to downtown Norfolk, he gets off, and he goes and spends $4.50 from the money he saved on light rail for his little latte. He drinks his coffee, hangs out for a little bit, gets back on the light rail, goes to MacArthur Mall, hangs out, waits till social services is open so he can get his <laughs> social services benefit check in downtown Norfolk. <laughs> gets done with that, he's got his social security benefits, gets back on the train, goes out to the ballpark to watch the ball game. Woohoo! Has a great time. When he's done, he gets back on the train and goes down a Newtown Road. Folks, that is six rides. Ridership, that is six people counting. These numbers are not people, they're trips on the train a day. It's bull, and you need to understand this. The tide has done nothing to reduce traffic congestion, and at the great level crossings where the little train bar comes down and they run every 15 minutes, it makes you sit and wait. I know I've been there. How fast does light rail go? Well, the cars have the capacity on the train tracks to go 66 miles an hour. And they go between stations 55 miles an hour. But it's 7.4 miles, people, from EVMS to Newtown Road. 7.4 miles. It takes 24 minutes because of the stops. If you do the math, that's an effective speed of 15 miles per hour. Yes, sir. Wouldn't it be more cost effective to give everyone who uses that train a well-equipped Mercedes-Benz? <laughs> it depends on who's profiting from it. Here's what the hours of operation are, and it requires feeder buses. Now, Norfolk had 54 square miles. We're 396 square miles. We're a lot more spread out than Norfolk. It's high density and urban, we're suburban and rural. We don't have a feeder bus system in Virginia Beach. Our buses suck. Right. But in Norfolk, they're pretty good. In order to get the federal funding for the fair, fair, share of federal funds to build this, you have to have a feeder bus system. You've heard nothing about that. In the 1998 environmental impact study, that was $500 million and $4.8 million operating expenses. We don't know what it is now in new dollars because we don't have the study. But watch out because the money that I showed you, $15.5 million, that's light rail, friends. That's not the buses. So how much is it going to cost? Oh, I want to tell you, by the way, good news. I talked to HRT, called them up, talked to them. Our light rail is incredibly safe. My wife and I rode the MARTA. I don't even want to tell you about the nightmares in Atlanta. We have had no assaults, no robberies, only eight cars vandalized since operation, and we have 50 part-time police officers, 30 of which are within the patrol area hired for this. They are doing a very good job in keeping you safe, so that's a good thing. Yeah, 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 Reed, we don't care. How much is it going to cost to build the light rail in Virginia Beach? Nobody's telling you, are they? No. No. I will. <laughs> All right. Shicker shock, folks. $807 million is what HRT is telling you. But pay close attention. 2,000 more riders than HRT could reach with a beefed up and expanded bus service at the beach required to get federal funding. Feeder buses. Yes, sir. Reed, I want to point out the date in that article, which is... April of 2011, that day, 807 million is flashing. Estimates today are up to 1.2 to 1.3 million in today's dollars just to build it. Okay, well that's interesting. You mean they're 1.26 billion? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. That's what I mean. That's because today we're talking about 1.62 billion. All right. Now, this is a rough picture that shows you who pays for building it. The federal government pays 50% if they agree to give you the money. The state pays 25% and the city of Virginia Beach picks up 25%. How much is that? If you do the math, it's $315 million for 10 miles. So in addition to the $15.5 million a year for operating new taxes, we're going to go out and float bonds for this and pay it interest and add it to our annual debt service. It's a stealth tax increase, friends, because we don't have the money. Don't worry about it, we're told. Virginia Beach has a AAA bond rating. We'll just 
raise the debt limit. Bankers love that. What does our mayor do for a living? <laughs> so read. What's a better way to pay for light rail? You're going to hear that those of you that object to light rail are standing in the way of progress. Yeah. Bull crap. Light rail is not a part of our future. It's a part of our past. And I'm going to prove it to you because this is amazing. And the answer to how to build light rail cor correctly that I can support was already done in Virginia Beach. <coughs> so let me give you a little story about Virginia Beach. Virginia Beach was a bunch of farms on the ocean. And a Norfolk developer named Colonel Marshall Parks in 1880 went to New Jersey to the shore and he said, holy crap, if I can buy that oceanfront from those farmers in Virginia Beach, I can make a killing. So he raised his own capital and he went out and talked to 11 farmers and he got up 1,300 acres of land. He bought it with his own money. And then he said, well, how do the people get to this hotel I'm going to build? We don't have roads. I'll build a train. And I'll charge people who ride it enough to cover the expense. And I'll eat the rest because I'll make a profit from all the land I bought by the new development, the transit-oriented development, at the new resort area that I'm building. And that's how I'll make my money. Now, look at how fast this was. In 1882, using his own capital, he formed the Norfolk and Virginia Beach <laughs> Railroad and Improvement Company. He then, within a year, built the train from downtown Norfolk to the oceanfront, and on uh, July 16, 1883, they hopped on the train and rode it to his brand new three-story hotel at the oceanfront. At the time, it was called the Virginia Beach Hotel. He later named it to Princess Anne Hotel. That was the beginning of the city of Virginia Beach. Virginia Beach was born by passenger rail, paid 100% by the developers who profited from the increased value of the land because they took the risk and they made the rewards. And Colonel Marshall Parks became incredibly wealthy. This is, in 1885, four stops, 45 minutes, and that was our first train. That was later replaced with the Chesapeake Transit Committee, for those of you from Chesapeake back there who are here tonight. And they went out to Cape Henry and made a loop, and they built a track over the Lesser Bridge, and they made a trip up to what's now Little Creek, and they had a big loop, all paid for out of the private sector. Downtown Norfolk was collected to trolley trains, which is what light rail transit is, an overhead cantilever electric train. That's all it is. It's in a fancy wrapper. It's a trolley, people. That's what it is. And when did light rail, passenger rail, stop in Virginia Beach? It stopped in November of 1947 when they scrapped the trains and replaced them with these really, really cool looking uh, powered, gas powered rail, uh, rail buses. And we had these running back and forth. Why did light rail go away? Does anybody in here know, we weren't Virginia Beach at, at this time in 1947, we were Princess Anne County. Anybody know how many people lived in Princess Anne County, which is now Virginia Beach, in 1950 when the census was? 5,000. Uh, 5,000. I'll be able to spin 37,000 people. As soon as we dumped rail and replaced it with roads and cars, we're now 437,000 people. If people tell you you need rail for development, they're full of baloney. Virginia Beach boomed because of the car. It's a fact. <coughs> you live here, you should know. We're going to talk a little bit quickly about Agenda 21. What is it? We're going to follow the yellow brick road. It's a gold road. What is Agenda 21? Agenda 21 is the United Nations Plan for Sustainable Development. It is the model of central planning. Under Bill Clinton and Al Gore, they passed ICE-T and T21 into public law. Those two laws allowed gas tax money to be taken from federal gas taxes and siphoned off to pay for light rail, transit, and other uses. Take it away from the highways, the Eisenhower highways, and start to pay for all this stuff. This is a euphoric land use control plan that basically says everyone's going to live in urban centers and everything outside is going to be green areas and we're going to dictate where you can live 
and how you can live. How does this get put into locally? Our transportation planning organization is federally mandated through ICE T and T21. It's a requirement under federal law. We have, through the state, the Transportation District Commission of Hampton Roads, which is supposed to watch over Hampton Roads Transit, a quasi-public entity. The people that are appointed to that, including Councilman Jim Wynn, who was the chairman during all this, will tell you, we have no time for that. We didn't run for that. Uh, I guess we just really can't do the job. Appointed regional government is a disaster. Agenda 21 is about taking away your freedoms and your liberty. And light rail is a part of that larger agenda as are strategic growth areas. It's an urban model versus a suburban in what we choose and how we choose to live. Regional government. If you don't recognize this flag in halftone, we have our own flag. Now, I came from Tidewater. That's, you know, Tidewater, Virginia. That's where we live. But certain business interests, bankers, certain shipyards, got together in the 80s and decided that they were going to call us Hampton Roads, and they were going to merge three MSAs together and suddenly vault us from 126 to number 32 nationally as far as how big we were by counting everything from Williamsburg down to Virginia Beach and out to Suffolk as one region, which we are not. That's what Hampton Roads is. What we ended up with through all of this is all appointed regional government and decision making through your transportation. These documents are your regional priority setting and transportation documents from 1998. When you read these, it's a who's who plan from lobbyists to build light rail and to create transit-oriented development. I've been fighting this a long time, people. Light rail is a key component of the regional agenda to turn your local governments into service providers and these decisions will be made at an area which you have no control. Let me say that again. Light rail is a cancer spreading through high water to create an unaccounted, unelectable, citizen-hostile regional government controlled by special interests. The Hampton Roads Partnership, which there's a tax paid by every one of you in this room, for this business lobby, 50 cents per head, to fund it, is an unholy alliance of all the universities, local elected officials, and who's who of developers, lobbyists, real estate agents, bankers, and land speculators, paid for with your tax dollars, who wrote this entire plan. And this is what we've been fighting for years, friends. So the question I have for you is, what do we do about it? How do we get this out in the remaining few days that we have with a presidential election and a state senate election and all the noise you're going to have in November <clears throat> competing for people's attention? How do we educate people on the con job that's being done by a $300,000 PAC funded by a lot of Hoffler bankers and developers to convince people who don't know any better that this is a great idea it's wonderful, it'll replace the cars, it's environmental and friendly, it's affordable. Yeah, it's affordable because somebody else is paying for it. And though it's somebody is you. You're not writing it, but you're going to pay for it. So I'm not sure, but I'm going to leave you with this party thought, open it up to you for suggestions. But one thing you'll learn is politics makes for very strange bedfellows. And those of you that are from Virginia Beach and have dealt with the budgets in our city, <coughs> We constantly go up against the city employees union as a voting block. Mm. Because every district in Virginia Beach is voted upon by every one. So these 77,000 city employees vote collectively mm. and they control who gets elected because that in turn controls what they get paid in salary and benefits. Mm. So taxpayers have been fighting with the city workers unions for years. Not now. On August 30th, Saturday, last weekend, didn't hear much about it, there was a huge protest by the Virginia Beach Police and Fire Department. They went and wore shirts to protest light rail. 
they went to the Tides game and had banners put up there. And they said, and they get it, these protesters said, if we put this thing in our city and we already can't afford school teachers, firemen, police, and benefits for our city workers, what's another $15 million a year in the bond debt service on $319 million going to do to cutting the pay and benefits of our city workers? And they woke up. So friends, we have a strange ally on our side if we want to stop that. <laughs> The question is, how do we join forces with these people who are already mad and motivated to defeat this? The city's worker group can put tremendous pressure on these people running for city council. So I suggest one thing we could think about is talking with Bill Bailey and the unions and finding out how can we work with them to get the word out to people to object to this so this doesn't happen and pass in this referendum. I do have one bit of good news, and I'll throw this open to discussion. Is light rail going to be built in Virginia Beach? No. No. Do you know why? The federal government not going to fund it. The Federal Highway Transportation Trust Fund went insolvent two years ago. We are now taking money out of the general fund to subsidize that. The federal government is broke. Other than President Obama dumping $500 million for high-speed rail or higher-speed rail or other rail projects, there's no money at the federal level. So without the 50% match, there's no way the city of Virginia Beach has the debt capacity to take on $1.2 billion to pay to build it, let alone what it's going to cost for the subsidies for all the SGAs and things that we talked about. So the good news is, because the feds are broke, the likelihood that we're going to get matching funds for now is low. But that doesn't mean you can rest on your laurels and allow this thing to pass at the ballot box, because if you do, it increases our score and the likelihood of it goes up. Yes, ma'am. I think the other reason is that we need to go out and vote no is because should the federal government ever be solvent again, and we can only pray, uh, what would happen is a no vote by the city, by the citizens would disqualify us from receiving those funds. And we, it lowers us yeah. down the list. Yeah, right now we have a record of a no vote, and that counts against us in federal scoring to win Which the magic votes? fund. Hmm? Yeah, no. We have one no vote on light rail and two vote mm -hmm. no votes on redevelopment authorities. Yeah, 1999, we voted no. Yes, ma'am. We have another issue, I think, that the entire city needs to keep in mind, and that is that some frustration goes through. Uh -huh. They're anticipating, and by the way, we'll know more about that on, on December 31st, <coughs> but if that goes through, they are anticipating there'll be something like 200,000 layoffs in Virginia. Now, you can make all the plans you want, but if we have 200,000 more unemployed people uh, to deal with in, after on January 1st, anything they decide now, whether they're voting for it on November 6th or not, will be not more because people do not have the taxpayers with money to share their load of that debt. Now, what she was telling you is about sequestration. All this money being taken out of the defense fund. Does anybody know what percentage of payroll in the city of Virginia Beach comes from defense and homeland security related to Just leave it there. Anybody? It's 54%. If we lose this number of jobs, the housing Real estate taxes are going to crash even worse than they are because there are no people left with high paying jobs to pay for the upscale homes we have, which is going to make them go down in value. When they go down in value, the city collects less real estate revenue mm -hmm. and we exacerbate our cash flow problem. So your point is exactly valid, which is probably why they want this now before the house of cards collapses, because if you can get it on the ballot now before people wake up on the other side of sequestration and the jobs are leaving and they see this, there's no way people would vote two years from now. Yes, sir. I was looking at the, uh, well, I had the privilege of riding one of the uh, San Francisco's BART, and I think that <clears throat> to me that was one of the cleanest, best 
of transit systems that I've seen. I think they spent like $1.6 million, <coughs> billion dollars to get that funded. And I think we paid like about $10 per, per ride. I think they went about maybe 104 miles. I think maybe, as David Bartholomew said, they probably have the grid line for it. What, uh, just playing devil's advocate, what if they decided to just up the fee instead? As far as like the ten dollars, twenty dollars per, you know. Uh, yes. I mean, now I do understand right, it's only seven it, miles. I'll, I'll turn it around. Nobody Who in this it. room is going to pay twenty-five dollars and twenty-five cents to travel fifteen miles an hour from Newtown Road to EVMS? Because <laughs> if you do, I'd like you to talk to me afterwards about buying my house. And, uh, make a statement on that. My, my son and I and his girlfriend were going to go to the baseball game one day and we thought, well, we'll take it. We'll go down and grab the light rail, ride down. I looked at the price of parking. Why not? It's because I got handicapped. I parked right next to the door. I looked at the price of riding the light rail. It was cheaper to go down, drive downtown, including gas. That's I mean, and that's even just paying. But know. remember this one thing. It isn't about moving people. It's about redeveloping it. Yes. Oh, all right. Um, do you, does anyone have any more questions? How much time do I have? Uh, we ha it's quarter tell, so we are running out of time. Um, can I can I hold us to one more question? With with if we if I can take two questions if they're going to be quick, not statements but actual questions. Yes, sir. Oh, was it just my imagination, or did I see something in the paper one day where, you know, they've already gone ahead and bought the $10 million uh, right rail for $40, 40, 40 million dollars for the right away. And all of a sudden now, they're talking about at some point turning that and going up Laskin. Yes, sir. As opposed, so anyway, they just wasted. Right. It's just a proposal. You know, I see. I get nervous every time I see a proposal. One <laughs> 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 more question. One more question. Yes, sir. I may be wrong, but I just want you to clarify. Uh, students ride the light rail for free. They do. It yeah. depends on where you go to school. There are passes at the universities, but the universities are paying. Actually, light rail is making money for HRT because the schools are paying more than the number of students riding it. But for local school students, K through 12, well, it's the city is paying for it. They're looking at it as a, as a benefit to them. So money yes. is coming out of schools into light rail? No, it's coming out of the general tax base. Right now, it's actually coming from the state and the feds. But when the two-year honeymoon period wears off, then Norfolk will have to pay for it out of general revenue. All right, well, thank you very much. My name is Lee.